everybody and welcome back to the poor man's chemist in this video I am going to be making up thorium and uranyl acetyl acetonates I've already made uranyl acetyl acetonate once before about a year ago in fact almost exactly a year ago but the prep was not satisfactory so I want to repeat it here and do it better and I also want to make the thorium complex which I've never seen before now for the thorium complex I already have some thorium nitrate that I've made up here you see a nice picture of it there I made that by a metathesis reaction between barium nitrate and thorium sulfate so that was very standard prep that's why I didn't film it there really wasn't anything to see it's a standard trick that you guys have seen me do a hundred times before for the uranyl complex all the literature that I can find says to start from uranyl nitrate and all I've got right now in my collection is uranyl sulfate so I'm going to make up a little bit of uranyl nitrate from uranium trioxide see I've got some here it's very nice uranium trioxide is extremely easy to make you just dissolve uranium and nitric acid to create a uranyl salt well the uranyl nitrate um, but you can know, it is same trick works when I'm recycling uranium I do the same thing I'll dissolve everything in nitric acid add aqueous ammonia precipitate out ammonium diuranate filter it off dry it and then put it in an oven and calcine it at about 230 degrees C until you get this nice lovely orange powder so um, got this over some boiling water I'm just gonna add a little water to that and a little bit of nitric acid and um, I, the goal is not to go overboard with the nitric acid that's why I'm doing it this way it should dissolve in it very readily I just want to make sure it add the acid drop wise and I don't have to wait 10 years on it all to fucking react so once um, I'm going to go ahead and dissolve the thorium nitrate in some water and get a solution of that ready. Um, get our uranyl nitrate solution ready and then come back when they're ready to go and we will do the preps. Alright, so now that we have our thorium and uranium salts in solution, the next thing will be to prepare the solutions of sodium acetyl acetonate so that we can use those to prepare our actinide acetyl acetonates. So, I have already measured out the amount of sodium hydroxide that we need. I have one molar equivalent of sodium hydroxide added for every molar equivalent of. 2,4 pentane dione, which I've got here, a very foul smelling chemical that always gives me a headache every fucking time I work with it because that's just how it is. Um, the plan with this one, we only have atomistry to go on here for the thorium acetyl acetonate, and it says to add a thorium salt to a faintly alkaline solution of the 2,4 pentane dione, they call it acetyl acetone, that's another name for it, either one works, um, and then to quantitatively precipitate out the thorium acetyl acetonate using ammonia. 
aqueous ammonia. Um, I'm not sure if we will need to add aqueous ammonia or not, but we'll give it a shot. Um, Atomistry does say that this acetyl acetonate can be recrystallized from alcohol, so it should be fairly simple to purify it if we decide to go down that road. Okay. So after doing the math, I figured that we needed about 1.25 mils of 2,4-pentanedione, a.k.a. acetylacetone, for this. It's almost, I think it's like 0.975 grams um, per mil at 25C. All right. Actually, that is very close to it. Very close. Okay. Sodium hydroxide should deprotonate that puppy and form sodium acetyl acetonate pretty easily. All right. Rental one, we need. Well, I think first we need a little more water before we do anything else. And stop the stir bar there, which is possessed. Okay, this is supposed to be 1.55 mils. The smell of this stuff is awful. Yep, and there's my acetyl acetone headache. Yay! How fun. Alright, here we go. We are going to add in our thorium nitrate to our solution of sodium acetyl acetonate. And there we go. Very nice. I didn't expect this to be difficult. Okay, maybe we don't need to add in the ammonia. We'll add in a little bit, just to be on the safe side. Atomistry does say to keep it very minimal, probably because it will form a complex with ammonia. I just want to see if it does anything for us here. Nah, it don't look like it. I'm not going to fuck with it then, just because I don't want a chance on fucking it up. Okay, well, that's nice. Very bland and colorless, but that's about what I expected. Does it settle out easily? It'd be nice if it settled out. Oh, I think it's going to. How fun. Okay, all right. Our urinal complex. Here we go. Now, this, we may need to add a bit more alkali to this because it'll all depend on how much excess acid was in this urinal nitrate. We should get some start to precipitate out. Okay, yes, I think we need to add a bit more alkali to this. Oh, oh, well, maybe not. Okay, never mind. Here it comes. Never mind, you just have to be patient. Woohoo! Yes! Oh, look at that, man. Oh, this is way better than the last time I did this shit. That is tits. Awesome! Oh, that is great. <laughs> ah, look at that. Very nice. As I anticipated, I mean, making acetyl acetonates is, is pretty straightforward. Um, what will be an accomplishment will being able to filter them off, which this one looks like it's going to be relatively cooperative so far as that goes. And um, then ideally, 
I mean, well, we could go one of two ways. We could just filter it off and call it a day, filter it, rinse it, dry it, and say, there it is. Or we could try to recrystallize it. Okay, everybody, here are the filtered products. This is the thorium acetylacetonate, and this is the uranyl acetylacetonate. And I've been able to you know, detect the thorium and the uranium with the Geiger counter here. Um, with the thorium, I'm getting, before I was getting roughly about 80 counts per minute, roughly. I haven't actually gone the distance and measured the uranyl acetylacetonate here, but it being a uranyl salt, it's much more radioactive than the thorium salt, so in here it makes the Geiger counter scream a little bit more. That's pretty impressive. Very nice. A little annoying after a while. Wish there was a way to shut that stupid beep off. So anyway, I am going to dry these out in the desiccator overnight. And then we will take a look at these tomorrow morning. And I will decide if I'm just going to wrap it up or if I'm going to bother with trying to recrystallize these things. Okay, everybody. There's our final products. Um... After giving it a little thought, I decided against recrystallizing it because I just don't really see that it's necessary. Um, they were all rinsed well. You use stoichiometric amounts of everything to make them. There really shouldn't be a whole lot of impurities in these things. When I looked at the literature, I found out that um, they can all be recrystallized from stuff like alcohol and diethyl ether. Oh, I know the uranyl salt um, complex can be recrystallized from diethyl ether. I'm not sure about the thorium one. But they can both be recrystallized from alcohol. Why that other paper was talking about extracting this shit into benzene, I have no clue, man. That, that just... Given everything that I've learned about this compound, that just seems like a very weird choice to me that the military was using benzene, of all things. And I'm not really sure what was up with that. But, um, yeah, uh, I'll tell you one thing, man. The glass in these vials stops beta particles like you would not believe. It's just crazy. Like, look at this shit. This has been sitting next to this thing now for a while. I'm getting about 30 counts a minute or so, which is very, very close to background. And I was getting like 900 counts a minute off the uranyl acetylacetonate yesterday. So, I don't know, man. Backyard Science 2000 sent me these vials. Uh, uh, whatever kind of glass they're made out of, they really, really block a lot of radiation. <laughs> no idea what's up with that. But yeah, right now, like 31, 30 counts per minute. I mean, background here is usually about like 25 to 30. So that's some pretty remarkable fucking glass in those vials. Anyway, so if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, well, I can kind of understand. Making these things is very simple, and it's kind of hard turning the prep of one of these things into a whole video because it's just so very straightforward. Don't worry, the next one will be something a little weirder than this. Subscribe, comment, share the video, throw a few bucks my way if you are enjoying this content. The links are in the description if you would like to do so. And until the next one, y'all, I will see you later.